there's two parts to the question. The first part is how do we look at vendors and how do we evaluate vendors and how do we find vendors? So I'm going to answer this in, in three ways. First of all, if you look at Starlink's portfolio, we actually take this 18 product portfolio today and we split it into four sub stories. So when we go to a customer or a partner, we're not selling 18 products. We're telling four stories. Compliance, APT, which is next generation threat, encryption and DLP, and vulnerability management. These are the four stories that we're taking to market. Now, why? Because they're a hot topic at the moment, because they directly address customers' existing needs. And the way we identify vendors, of course, other than visiting RSA and InfoSec and various different conferences and meeting vendors, is you know, we're looking at what our customers want. In most cases, customers and partners come to us and say, have you heard of this vendor? We have this requirement that they seem to meet. Or, what do you think of this vendor? They approached us and they have a great technology. We look at this feedback, we take it into account, and even though they don't have local presence and no customers and no partners, this is actually what excites us because it's niche, it's new. And we will invest then to bring that vendor in, deploy the local teams to support that vendor, and you know, so on and so forth. But in the evaluation process, we try to make sure, does it fit into one of these stories? Because it's critical that it fits into the story. Because we're not just looking at bringing on an unlimited number of vendors, that's not our goal here. Our goal is to bring on the right vendors to cover these stories effectively. Are there gaps that need to be filled within the stories that we need to look for a certain product? So from an evaluation perspective, it's very comprehensive. It's, uh, it takes many months before we choose to go with a vendor. We don't just take every vendor that comes to us asking to add us to our portfolio. Uh, you know, and even the discussion process with a vendor, this goes on to your second point of the question, is critical because for a niche vendor, it's critical that when we invest in it as a distributor, we must maintain master distribution status, at least initially, in order to grow that technology in the local market, to get increased market share, to grow the channel from zero to something. Because if there are multiple distributors, as you said, it makes it very difficult and there becomes channel competition and conflict at the early stages. Now, as the vendor matures from high touch to mid touch to low touch, we understand that in some cases, multiple distribution landscape is required for vendors. And we're more than happy with this. There are some products in our portfolio that have this case. You know, where there are multiple distributors, because the vendor is no longer niche. It was niche, and it does address some niche requirements today. But as a vendor, they've moved from high touch to low touch. And accordingly, they need to have additional distributors, not just because Starlink can't support them, but because they need to be able to scale they need to be able to have multiple options for credit and so on and so forth for finance reasons. So the point is we are more than happy with this. But if you look at it today, even in those scenarios, those second distributors are much smaller in terms of market share or in terms of coverage than we are because of our, what I shared with you before, our true value added distribution coverage. So, you know, from a strategy perspective, we look at vendors obviously by attending various conferences, also by feedback from the market in terms of what we should be looking at. The evaluation process is very comprehensive, right? We take many months to make sure it fits into one of these four stories, APT, vulnerability management, compliance, or encryption and DLP. And once we've identified that it makes sense for us, right, we then initially look for master distribution. But as the product matures and evolves and becomes more prolific, we are very open to looking at the vendor to have a multi-distribution landscape. From the perspective of vertical segments, first let me say that the market, any market is split by segment and by vertical, right? So you mentioned a few verticals just now. Starlink historically has focused on segments, which means enterprise. All of our solutions, all, are enterprise solutions, crossing all verticals. Now, when the company was founded, the focus was on banking and finance which is why we have the largest number of banking and finance customers. And the reason for that is because of compliance. In the world of security, compliance was a huge driver. Recently, it's next generation threats have become also a very big driver. But initially, nine, 10 years ago, compliance was the driver. So if you look at compliance, which is the vertical that come, pops into mind first? It's banking and finance, which is why the focus initially was banking and finance worldwide in all the all countries we operated in, which initially was just the GCC anyway. 
over the last few years as, we, as we've expanded outwards into Turkey, Levant region and, and Africa, um, obviously we're looking again at banking and finance for sure, but our solutions have evolved. The market has evolved to now be also driven by next generation threats. So today, if you look at the four verticals that Starling focuses on, it's banking and finance, oil and gas, telco, and government. But in all cases, the segment still remains the same, enterprise, right? So, but it is, you asked a very good question that, you know, when you are looking at certain markets, the verticals are different, absolutely. For example, in Turkey, oil and gas is not very strong because it's, you know, much smaller compared to Abu Dhabi or Saudi or any of the GCC countries. Um, and in South Africa, for example, the verticals themselves are different. Healthcare is important. Education is important because they're large institutions that are security focused, which doesn't exist so much in the GCC, for example. So these cultural differences are addressed by the local country teams. The way we structure the country teams in each country is dependent on that local market. For example, the BDMs in the UAE, they carry a mixed bag of named accounts, which span all the four verticals I just shared with you, right? Uh, banking and finance, oil and gas, telco, government. So each BDM has a mixed bag. Same in Saudi, because of the market. But in Turkey, the BDMs are vertical specific because the verticals themselves are large enough to justify having vertical specific BDMs. And the same strategy applies to the channel. So here, in this part of the world, the channel that we look for are the enterprise channel because they themselves aren't vertical focused. They may have account managers and BDMs that are vertical focused, but their strategy is either enterprise or SME. Whereas in Turkey and other, you know, other outside the Middle East countries like South Africa, the partners themselves sometimes are vertical specific. We have banking and finance specific partners in South Africa. You know, we have government specific partners in, in Turkey. So accordingly, the same way we structure the teams is the same way we structure the channel in the countries that require vertical splits. Otherwise, the focus is on the segment, which is enterprise. So turnover 2012 for the group, by the group composed of three companies was $30 million. This year it'll be 50. Starlink will be 30 out of the 50 this year. There are other two companies will make up another $20 million. Starlink is the oldest of the three in the group, right? There's Starlink, there's SecureLink, and there's ImmediaLink, right? Now, from the perspective of Starlink, it's been around since 2005, right? The other two companies are much newer. So definitely the, the, the lion's share of the revenue is coming from Starlink. But over time, we'll see that obviously, you know, change a little bit as well as the other two organizations uh, evolve and develop themselves. But look, in between, between us here, I can tell you that Starlink's goal is, you know, to be the largest IT security true VAD in the world. So today we're 50, tomorrow will be 100 million. I mean, that is our goal, to be a $100 million. The next financial goal is to be a $100 million IT security fad. And that will, we'll see what happens. We're looking at, you know, not dreams are not that far-fetched. We're looking at uh, geographical expansion. Uh, that's quite exciting into places like uh, CES states, Europe, the rest of Africa. You know, there's a lot of ideas that are playing around at the moment, but uh, We'll see what happens. We want. We, we believe in growing organically and not too quickly and not in too much of a rush. It needs to be organic. The portfolio needs to be ready for that market. The market needs to be ready for the portfolio. Uh, there needs to obviously be enough of an enterprise segment with spending power in that market to justify us being there. There's a lot of criteria that goes into play to decide which markets we enter. But as the portfolio expands, as we grow geographically, it's a black and white sort of formula that says that we will of course grow revenue wise as well. At this point in time, we will not look at changing our portfolio from where it stands today. What I mean by that is we, in this last quarter, in Q3 calendar year, uh, we have already taken on a couple of products, a couple of new niche products, some of which I mentioned before like Venify, Red Seal, uh, core security, Bit9, you know, and these are all complementing those four stories I told you about before. 
I have no plans or we have no plans to look at any new products in Q4, no. Uh, the focus is just on maximizing opportunity creation for our existing portfolio, especially the new products. I mean, if you look at October, you have GTEx. It's a great lead generation opportunity creation campaign that can be used for 2014. Uh, and that's really the focus, to maximize opportunity generation and lead generation for the next three months. Any new products or vendor evaluation will only happen next year. Typically, if you look at the annual cycle for vendor valuation, it starts in Jan, it finishes in April, May, and then from April, May until August, September, we execute those decisions. Why? Because if you see RSA, InfoSec, they all happen between Jan and April. So those, we visit the shows, we speak to the market, we understand what customers are looking for, and then we start doing the evaluation between April and August. And we spend three, four months evaluating what works best speaking with the vendors, negotiating, and then we finally make decisions in Q3. So that's why, as I said, four vendors were added to the portfolio in the last quarter. And then Q4 is used to maximize opportunity creation for those vendors, as well as partner development. So you'll see a lot of training going on, a lot of campaigns, road shows, some, our security summit is in November. All of this is for lead generation and opportunity creation. I would say that this market, the, the known market size, is a billion dollars. What I mean, this is where the complexity of the question comes in, that there are so many entities today that don't know about security, government, I mean all the verticals I mentioned that are still learning about getting awareness of what IT security is and how it's important for them to achieve compliance and to stop next generation threats, that I believe truly that that market size is double the size. The actual market size is double. The so measurable the market is yeah. one. Measurable is one billion, actual is two billion. Because you just look at the sheer size of some of these government entities in various parts of the GCC, for example, that still are learning today what basic security is and how it's important to them. We live, breathe, play, sleep, IT security. That's all we know, that's all we do, and that's all we will do. So today, if you look at the market, and you look at you know, what people are investing in, in terms of customers, if you look at the uh, threats that are targeting this region specifically, IT security is a hot topic. You know, if you want to be associated with IT security, you want to succeed in this industry, you have to work with the best IT security distributors. So please, Come work with us and we'd be, it would be our pleasure to be associated with them. Look, vendors, when they come into region, they want something. Immediate return on investment. Simple. Without having to put too many people on the ground, Starlink will become an extension of their teams if they are the right vendor for us. And instantly, we can start developing the market for them shortening the overall time to receive a return from 36 months to one year or 18 months. And that's really our forte, our strength.